I and my longtime friend Dr. Blick just watched the theatrical release Dragon Ball Z Resurrection F in cinemas, and it was freaking awesome. My relationship with Dragon Ball is pretty simple. I think it's a good time, especially when it's playing to its strengths. The show's at its most fun and watchable when it builds its tension around high energy cathartic fight scenes with giant stakes and well defined motivations. Conversely, it's at its worst when the bloated storytelling gets convoluted and inconvenient. Resurrection F largely takes everything the series does right and executes it near flawlessly, making it one of the most enjoyable entries in the series for me. With immaculate pacing, consistently high quality animation cuts, and plenty of fun memorable moments, the film seemed to have a renewed understanding of what made the series so enjoyable to so many people. One thing that honestly surprised me was the tightness of the film's characterization, leading to tons of funny lines and memorable interactions. Things like Gohan rushing in to assist Piccolo in a fight or Krillin's cute scene with Android 18 carry that much more weight and impact because the viewer knows what went into them, and the film intentionally presents them with the weight that they needed to be memorable. When a film stars characters so legendary and influential, it only makes sense that their characterization becomes more solidified over time. Also, witnessing a Super Saiyan wearing a tracksuit may have been the most incredible experience the film had to offer. Bulma is her usual fabulous self and is given all the great lines and screen time that best girl deserves. Frieza has always been my favourite villain, not only due to his arrogant, self-important disposition, but also because he works as something of a perfect foil to everything Goku has come to represent. He's not only opposed to Goku's sense of justice and moral clarity, it outright disgusts him, lending an extra feeling of severity to all of their encounters. Watching these two monoliths of power throw everything they have at each other with the fate of the Earth riding on the outcome will always be one of the most exhilarating things ever, and the excellent production quality amplifies the energy through the roof. The animation throughout Resurrection F is pretty much as good as this series gets, with supercharged fight choreography and consistently high production values that gave the film the level of pomp and circumstance that it needed. No more of the still frames, panning shots, and recycled animation cuts that numbed the tension of several scenes in the original series. It could also get pretty creative with the way its battles were structured, with Krillin swerving through a maze of trees while taking on Frieza's soldiers standing out as a highlight. The film's phenomenal pacing ensures that no expense is spared, making all the action and drama as engaging as possible. The story feels very self-contained and complete despite the runtime, but lacking the development of a complete story arc. Plenty of details such as the entirety of Frieza's form of training go completely unseen, but with that said I kind of see this as preferable to the alternative. I mean with such a simple series with such simple characters and simple goals, it makes sense for the film's structure to reflect that simplicity. Despite not being as thorough or in-depth as Dragon Ball is usually known for, the film still manages to pack in several moments of calm and levity. The film was unexpectedly hilarious, playing off of the well-established personas of the characters in very self-aware ways. Frieza calling Vegeta the Prince of Nothing was awesome in itself, but most of the film's funniest moments are definitely courtesy of Jaco, which was sold by a fantastic performance by Todd Haberkorn. The English dub overall was surprisingly fantastic, with everyone having nailed their characters to a T by this point, and Shun Shimmel spiffing up Goku's obnoxious laugh to perfection. Now despite all this praise, it's still Dragon Ball, and you can expect all the limitations of the series to rear their heads in the film. Every character's motivation is still as one note and generic as they've ever been, with no real emotional depth or complexity being given to them whatsoever. Frieza wants to destroy Earth and rule the galaxy, while Goku and friends naturally want to prevent this. It's such a flat and by the books premise that an observant viewer can likely predict exactly what's going to happen just by hearing the title, and the film is content to not really throw any curveballs. With that said, the franchise continues to have a very minimal understanding of stakes and how they can be used to develop a character's motivation. Frieza outright destroys an inhabited city in the second and he arrives on Earth, and this goes pretty much unacknowledged throughout the film's run, with Bulma mentioning in passing that they can just wish it back with the Dragon Balls by the end. Now I wouldn't really consider these weaknesses, but rather definitive aspects of the franchise's nature. Aspects of the series would be unrecognisable without, but keeping me from really caring about it on a deeper level. I do however have a few legitimate problems with the movie. Despite the largely fantastic animation, the film does have a handful of obnoxious CG sequences that run at about 30 frames per week, most notably all of Frieza's copy and paste soldiers. A decent amount of the film's tension is dulled by the fact that most of the cast spend most of the film sat in one place watching the fight. I mean, I know none of them can really do anything to help, but they could probably do something. My biggest problem with the film's narrative, however, comes down to its epic climax. Seconds before death, Frieza blows up the planet to avoid admitting defeat, murdering everyone outside of the main crew, Beerus and Whis. They're reminded that because Whis is pretty much omnipotent, he can reverse time by three minutes to let Goku rectify Vegeta's mistake and save everyone. Akira Toriyama is well known for arse pulls and plot conveniences, and this right here may have been the most cheap and manipulative way to wrap up this film. I'm not debating the logic of the setup, but rather that the whole scenario has no consequence or circumstance. Because Beerus and Whis' abilities are so ill-defined and needlessly supreme, the writers can pretty much make them do anything at the convenience of the narrative without having to worry about reason or logic. Now this can be a positive in certain situations, but the film simply uses this as an excuse to have an explosive, easily reversible set piece as a big climax. 
Beerus makes it clear that he could easily destroy Frieza if he wanted to, but because he has no real bias or moral alignment, he doesn't bother. The scene suggests that no matter how many times Goku messed up, time could be infinitely reversed by 3 minutes, which was a very arbitrary number for what is essentially a god. The whole setup which reeks of sloppy writing and definitely would have been stronger if the characters actually earned victory by their own hands. The ending also leaves it incredibly ambiguous as to whether Goku, Vegeta or Frieza were the stronger fighter, as for all intents and purposes Frieza deserved to win, with Goku's mercy and Vegeta's pride being their respective downfall. From the beginning, the film seemed to be building up this theme of collaboration, but by the end both Goku and Vegeta still completely reject the idea of working as a duo, effectively learning nothing. But whatever. If I want to watch characters develop, I'm better off watching Dora. Anyway, despite my grievances, Dragon Ball Z Resurrection F was thoroughly enjoyable and consistently entertaining, filled with fun characters, hype moments, and hilarious scenes. It's pretty much Dragon Ball at its best, with all the fat trim to give us the purest, most effective representation of the show's appeal. Share your detailed and analytical thoughts below so we can engage in constructive and enriching discourse. I mean, who doesn't love Dragon Ball fans? Ha!